Jackson Radio Show. Welcome back, everybody. Kevin Jackson here. So, the Donald Trump economy has removed, I think it's like 1.5 million off the welfare rolls. People going back to work. He's created good jobs. Stock market booming. Companies coming back to America. Some who are planning on leaving, staying. Hiring people. Research and development. Good jobs. The jobs that Americans want. All this is going on right now. We are in the midst of the biggest crap of, I mean, it's just so much nonsense being discussed by the left, the media. Russiagate, where's Russiagate? Mueller's going to get that Donald Trump. Whatever. Nothing's going to happen to Trump or anybody in his, uh, I mean, of significance in his uh, administration because they haven't done anything. But where Mueller is going to lead back, he's going to lead back on himself. The death spiral. It's going to lead back to many, many Democrats. Many of them are going to go down over this. So, and at some point, when people do start focusing on things again and remembering what's been going on, you know, in in terms of the economy and all these other things that we're talking about, the things that are important to you, more time with your family, your friends, more free time, vacation time, time for self, self self-reflecting, business is starting, you're in control of yourself, and suddenly there's this independence that's going to come. Then you watch what happens. You're going to get a landslide in 2020. Forget 2018, rock solid, rock solid. We're, We're flushing the flakes out, we're flushing out the the corkers, we're flushing out some of these other leftists that are, that are disguised as Republicans, a.k.a. rhinos, and Steve Bannon's going after them. You're going to get the names and you're going to learn more about them and go after them because you're tuned in. And the midterm elections pretty much always go to the people plugged into politics. The left has nothing to to put its base on. In fact, this guy right now, Doug, what's his face, that's running against uh, Judge uh, Roy Moore, they say, you know, th- their thing is he can't motivate, he can't energize the black base. This is a, a white dude who is pro-abortion, anti-business, pro-legal uh, immigration. He's as left as you can get, and they're going, he can't motivate the base of the blacks. No, he can't. He's got there. Even with all that they've done to go after Roy Moore in Alabama, they can't get black folks to go. Well, let's get on the the bandwagon of this guy, Doug. What's his face? And in fact, black people in Alabama care as much about so much about him. I can't remember his name. That's the way they view him. Doug, what's his face? Elizabeth Warren did an interview on national TV and could not remember the man's name. That's how much negative she's got on Roy Moore, but nothing positive. To be able to remember the candidate's name, a chance for him to get all kinds of money coming in, etc. You know who's raising money? Roy Moore. Raising money like a madman. Yeah. So what? Look, all I'm telling you is you can be jubilant, jubilant about all this because it's good news for us. And eventually, they're going to have to come back to reality. The reality that they gave us the worst president in history, and the number of homeless people is an example living. In L.A. on Skid Row is the worst the city has seen since the Great Depression. And that's with Donald Trump rocking this economy. So what he's saying to you is even when when capitalism and the right you know, conservative voice comes in and starts creating jobs, when you build a, a cesspool of corruption and ignorance of California, you can't even Trump can't overcome that. They said this year, nearly 2,500 homeless and near homeless men, women and children were served Thanksgiving lunch on Skid Row in Pasadena and Canoga Park. We haven't seen numbers like this since the Great Depression. Georgia Berkowitz, the the director of the uh, Midnight Missions Public Affairs Department, told the L.A. Times. Now, it would be funny if they could try to blame it on Trump. It's got to be President Trump's this economy really so that. Record-breaking stock market that's setting records every single day, sometimes multiple records a day. That's it. Maybe it's that record unemployment that President Trump has. Maybe it's the record 1.5 million people that have come off the welfare rolls that Obama put on of those 16 million that he put on. 
Maybe it's those reasons. They have nothing. They have. I mean, it is so fun to watch this because it couldn't happen to a better state. California is in triage. California is suffering beyond belief and they will not wake up. The next governor of California is likely to be a guy named Gavin Newsom. He was married to Stephanie uh, Guilfoyle of Fox News for a while. They were California's power couple. And Gavin Newsom couldn't keep it in his pants. He and Stephanie divorced and he's been a serial, you know, date, date the hot chick. He's dated Hollywood and people like that. He's a rock star. They, they want him. He's a Bill Clinton that's polished. That isn't from the hill, hillbilly land of Arkansas. No offense. I love Arkansas. But he's a he's Bill Clinton city-fied, urbanized. I remember when I met Gavin Newsom, it's been 20 years ago I met this guy. And I remember thinking, this is a dude that is so full of himself. I mean, the hair's got to be perfectly combed. The suits are all this. I mean, he is he is the, 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 the quintessential empty suit, but looks good in it. Yeah. A guy that could have given Barack Obama a run for his money. But let me tell you something. He won't be able to beat Donald Trump or anybody we put. If anybody decides they want to fight like Trump, Gavin Newsom won't beat him. He's a diehard leftist. Die hard. He's got his issues too. Big time womanizer. Yeah. So we'll we'll see how all that shakes out. But but that's where we are. 2,500 homeless people during Thanksgiving. The most they've seen. In 2014, Breitbart News went to Skid Row to deliver Thanksgiving meals to 300 people. They were provided by a group called My Friend's House Foundation and Fair Game Food Truck. But 3,000 now. 3,000. 2,000 people served. I'm sorry, 2,500. 2,000 people were served a sit-down meal of turkey with trimmings at the 30th annual Community Thanksgiving Day Dinner for San Fernando of Valley homeless and low income families at the Guadalupe Community Center in Canoga Park. The homeless epidemic that has swept L.A. has become so bad in August that the Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors approved a program to pay homeowners up to seventy five thousand dollars to house homeless people on their own properties. I want you to think about that. They're paying people to set up little tent cities so families can live on other people's property. And it's so bad in L.A. that people are having to do it. That's a great little second income form. In January, the Times noted that although the city remains the number one city for homelessness in America, L.A. leads the nation in the number of unsheltered homeless people. New York City is the number one for homeless. Hard to believe given the climate, right? But L.A. leads the nation in the number of unsheltered homeless so look at where the homelessness exists and and then ask yourself how do they get there why is it that these cities lead in homelessness well you know the answer i don't have to tell you that this is the kevin jackson radio show